Guys, do the new tailors make it in yet? Are the tailors here yet? Did somebody say something about new tailors? You know, I paid for these tailors over a month ago. Uh, are they here yet? Hey, Brett, the new tailors are in. Hello again, friends. Matt with Eddie's Guitars coming to you, as always, from St. Louis, Missouri. Today I'm joined on my right here by Mr. Granville Helm. And if that name sounds at all familiar, uh, Granville's been with us for right at a year now and uh, probably talked to him a time or two if uh, the subject of Taylor guitars has come up. Since, since uh, Granville has been in our shop here, he rapidly became sort of our resident Taylor expert here. He's got quite a bit of background with their guitars, both selling them and playing them, and uh, just has a, a real enthusiasm about what those folks are doing out there in California, rightly so. So... Uh, we actually are here to help introduce a brand new Taylor model today, and I thought, who better to have join me than the guy that knows an awful lot about them here. So uh, what we have sitting between us here is the brand new Taylor GT model. Uh, the GT designates the Grand Theater model, uh, which if that does not sound familiar, I'm not surprised. It's a kind of a brand new creation from Taylor. Um, this is a new body shape and size, you could say, in the context that they build it anyway. A new scale length, a new uh, bracing system, and new tone woods in this guitar. So an awful lot to cover here, but we will jump right in. Granville, yes. talk to me about the shape and size of this beauty. So this is right in between the GS Mini and the Grand Concert size. Mm -hmm. uh, fits in it's just like perfectly slotted right in between them. So if you're looking for something a little bit larger than the GS Mini and a little bit smaller than the Grand Concert Series, this is the perfect guitar for you. Yeah. Well, and, and you and I have discussed at length in the past, uh, you know, the, the, the GS Mini, let me, let me back up. The GS Mini is a wildly successful instrument, rightly so. It's a very comfortable, compact little guitar. They sound great. They're priced right. A lot of guitar for uh, for what you pay to get a GS Mini. We've both had folks reach out to us and say, you know, does Taylor ever have any intention of doing, you know, kind of a beefed up version of a GS Mini, whether that was referring to a slightly larger guitar or a guitar that features all solid tone woods. And they knocked out uh, both of those in, in one big hit here. Uh, it's, it's really cool. They... Um, you know, being an all solid wood guitar, being an American made guitar, which we haven't touched on yet, uh, you get the quality that Taylor is known for. Uh, you can see the back and sides here is a beautifully dark stained tone wood. What do we have here, Granville? So, what we have here is an Urban Ash. Urban Ash has been uh, locally harvested in Southern California, for, in San Diego, California, where Taylor is made. Uh, they reached out to the municipal department and they. Uh, called them up and said, hey, uh, we see that you're tearing these trees down. Is there any way we could use them so that we can repurpose them and make them into guitars, you know, built right here? Mm -hmm. And that's what they have gone ahead and done. Well, it's, it's cool. It's not only uh, in terms of the body of the guitar anyway. It's, it's all North American harvested tone woods. But taking that even a step further, as Granville said, these were trees that were scheduled to be, you know, taken out of where they were growing anyway and so the folks at taylor as they are known to do uh saw the opportunity and said you know here's some perfectly good american tone wood here can we make a guitar out of this and with a, a bit of uh r d and testing of the tone wood they determined we can make a great sounding guitar out of this in a pretty small size and so having a again just an all north american tone wood it, it, again just in the body of the guitar it's pretty darn cool um to accommodate some of what's happening here, they actually came up with a new bracing system too. They're referring to this as the C-Class bracing system. No, it's not a Mercedes operation here. Uh, C designates cantilevered. Uh, and what you have happening here is some of that bracing inside the guitar 
uh, mostly in the lower bout area there is actually cantilevered away from the top of the guitar, really, really allowing it to move and resonate to maximum efficiency is, is the idea there. So a pretty neat way of uh, sort of voicing in some more bass and low end out of a pretty small guitar. We should probably also mention this is a 24 and 1 8 inch scale length guitar. So it's a, you know, again, compact, comfortable. They actually say this scale length and just the tension of the feel across the fingerboard is the equivalent to if you were to capo a standard scale length guitar at the first fret. That's about the same fret spacing and scale length you would have there just for reference and comparison's sake. So a, a comfortable guitar, not such a short scale length that the thing doesn't make sound or doesn't sustain or resonate. It's got great sustain, but uh, really just a neat little package. So the, um, I know the, uh, the bridge and the fingerboard of this guitar are a little different. This is actually eucalyptus that they use here on the bridge and fingerboard, which is a very, and the headstock, yep, very the, good, the thank head, you. The head veneer is also uh, Absolutely. eucalyptus. Which is neat, you know, it's a, it's a very pretty wood. You can see the nice uh, kind of striping uh, down the uh, fingerboard there. I'm sure we'll, we'll see all sorts of different variations on this, just depending on the particular slice of eucalyptus they use. but. A very nice, uh, very nice touch there, and a, a, a nice wood for sure. Neat, neat little inlays on the fingerboard. Just a well dressed guitar. Definitely not over the top at all. It's a, it's a pretty uh, subdued looking guitar, and it's in its styling. But um, I have to say, Granville, I do like what they did on the edging here, which they, uh, which they do not do on the GS Mini. What you can see, and it's, it's hard to see. We'll maybe put a picture in here. There's a black line of purfling on the top of the guitar, and what is beyond the purfling normally would be binding material. And uh, what we have here is almost kind of a faux binding because that is spruce on the very edge of that. That's that same spruce top there, but they actually stain that edge just on the outside of that black purfling line. So just a, a good little detail aesthetically. Uh, gives it a little bit more of a framed look, I feel, than, mm -hmm. than the GS Mini, so just a little nice touch there. Uh, the E models will come loaded with the ES2 electronics. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they do just a standard GT model as well that's a full acoustic, no electronics, but uh, uh, I'm sure we'll be carrying both. I I'll tell you, as, as awesome as this actual guitar is, I'm just as excited to see what other iterations they're going to do of it in the future. I'm I mean, excited. it's as, as a platform, uh, you know, uh, the shape and size and scale length and all that good stuff, um, it's got a lot of potential to go many different directions with different tone woods, so I'll be excited to see how they, how they uh, address that in the future. But I'll tell you, as an introduction here with these tone woods, this is a nice guitar, so. It's going to be great. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we take a little listen to this a little bit? All right. 